Hi everybody, how is it going? I welcome you to this course series in which we will learn to use Python for data science on stocks data. Within Anaconda distribution for Python 3.7 version on 64-bit Windows 10 operating system. For installation of the same distribution, please watch my video on installing Python for data science and I have provided the link for the video in the description below. In this first tutorial of series, we are going to learn step by step downloading the stocks data for multiple companies that are listed on the exchange and for this purpose, I'm going to use National Stock Exchange aka NSE of India and all of these scripts that are listed on NSE. We can download the list by visiting the website of NSE and going on the sub page for which the link is provided on the website under the menu tab market data. The very first link on the page securities available for trading is the one we are interested into and after downloading when we open this file we can see the symbols the company name and other information related to that script such as date of first listing and face value of share etc i have already cleaned this csv file and saved it in my github repository data sets and the file can be identified by name all underscore stock underscore codes underscore nse dot csv file as shown on the screen in particular i will download the data for these scripts from yahoo finance website from january 1st 2020 until april 9 2020 I will be using Python package Y Finance for this exercise along with Pandas for analysis of the data and Matplotlib for visualization purposes. The reason why I am going to use the Y Finance package is that it is fast and also collects multi tickers data into one data frame grouped by each ticker and thus making it easy not only to access the data for individual tickers but also to perform various other analysis. Anyways, I will show you the main differentiators while we progress in this course series. To learn more about either Y Finance or Pandas or Matplotlib, I will suggest you go to the websites for these three and the URL links can also be found in the description below. So what I am going to do next is that I have created a folder on my desktop and named it as Python. This folder will contain the data set that we will be using for the series. The CSV file in this folder is the same about which we earlier have talked and downloaded from GitHub. When we open up this file in Excel, we can see that it contains the three columns, the symbol names of the scripts, the company name and Yahoo Finance website equivalent ticker names. Let's close this file and click do not save. Now in the address bar of the folder, we type cmd and hit enter which will open the command prompt with the folder location as default value as we can see it. Assuming that you have already installed the Anaconda Python 3.7 distribution, we can type Jupyter Notebook on the prompt and then hit enter which should launch the Jupyter Notebook in the default browser of your machine which might take a while to start the kernel in the background and launch. So we now have Jupyter running and we can see that the data CSV file is visible in the folder. Next, we click on this new pull down button and click on Python 3 that will launch a new IPython notebook. When we click on untitled here, a little window will pop up in which we can rename this IPython notebook to something like NSE stocks data and click on rename blue button which will change the name of the file to the chosen one. We can click on toggle header to hide the header menu bar to get more space on the screen. Working with Jupyter IPython notebook is beyond the scope of this course series but I am assuming that you have sufficient working knowledge about Jupyter notebooks. In the next step, we will download Python package Yfinance using pip command as shown on the screen. Since we are trying to download and install this package from Jupyter notebook, please do note to use exclamation sign before the pip command and then hit control and enter keys on the keyboard. 
since I already have installed this package and the dependencies of it on my machine, I'm seeing this message requirement already satisfied. But if you are installing for the first time, you would see packages being downloaded, unpacked and installed in the background. And in the last, a message to confirm the installation successful will be printed on the notebook. Then we will import the package using import function and alias the import as yf or pd and so forth as shown on the screen. The magic function that is a percentage sign followed by matplotlib inline will print all the plots on the notebook only. Now we will load the data from the CSV file into a pandas data frame as shown. The name of data frame will be list underscore tickers underscore NSE. But if you wish, you can choose the name of your choice. Let's review the data. And for that, we will be using method head and pass the argument value as three to get the first three rows of observations from the data frame. When we do it and as expected, we have the same data in the data frame. Our focus will be on the Yahoo equivalent symbols for NSE tickers. Let's fetch these tickers into a Python list and name the list as yahoo underscore symbol, which will be equal to data frame name followed by a dot, followed by a column name, followed by a dot again, and then followed by a method to underscore list. This way we convert the chosen column from a data frame into a Python list and store that into an object. And when we use function type on that object, we get list as type of object. This confirms that we are good to go. When we print first three items in the list, we get what we expected, the first three tickers in the list. We can also check the length of the list using Python function len as shown on the screen. So there are 1627 tickers in the list. Let's get some data for these companies from Yahoo Finance website. And for that purpose, we will use download method from YFinance package. There are four arguments that we will pass to this method. These arguments will be the list of symbols, the start date and the end date between which the information has to be retrieved for each of the tickers and grouping argument, which in our case will be the ticker itself. By default, the data will be pulled for each day on which they were trading at the exchange. And whenever there were either holidays or weekends, the dates will be absent from the data. The data will be stored into an object which will be a data frame named ticker underscore data. And when we execute this code in the cell by hitting shift and enter keys together, we can see the progress of the downloading of the data into the object. It might take a while depending upon the internet speed as well as the number of tickers and the length of the period for which data is to be pulled. There may be some tickers for which data either is not available on Yahoo for the period mentioned in the code or maybe due to some other reasons such as the script is expelled from trading etc. We can skip that exploration for now and move on with whatever data we got downloaded into the object. Let's see how the data frame would look like. So we have total of 9762 columns for these tickers data. There are six columns for each of the tickers and these are open, high, low, close, adjusted close prices and volume of trading in respective columns. The observations or the values are in each of the rows for each of the trading days between the dates we pulled the data for. This is awesome because not only we pulled the data for all the tickers almost into one single data frame, but also it was relatively fast. In the next step, we will learn to access the data for an individual ticker from this data frame. To do so, we first take the data frame name and access an specific ticker for which the data has to be pulled. Let's say in this case GNA.NS and then we pass the list of columns that we are interested into. Let's say open and close prices for the ticker. But instead of pulling all the observations, we will limit to only a couple of these. So we will be applying head method to this code. Finally, we will hit shift and enter keys together to execute the code in this cell and we see the result on the notebook. Since this is a lot exercise we have gone through so far, let's save the data so that we could use it in future whenever we need to. To save a pandas data frame, we have to apply a method on it and the method is two underscore CSV. The argument that we need to pass to this method is the name of the file with which we want to save this data frame followed by a dot and CSV as shown on the screen. 
this will save the data frame as csv file into the default folder from where we are running this jupyter notebook finally in this video tutorial i will show you how to get only the close price data for all the tickers but before that i will make a copy of this data frame so that we can safely work on the replica without disturbing the original one Although this step is not necessary, but for beginners, I will suggest to follow this way to be at the safer side. Following code will make a copy of the data. Let's now get all the close price columns for all the tickers and following code does this. Here, we are locating for all the indexes and only the column label values for the second label equals to close. Please note the first label of the columns in the data frame is the ticker names and then we will review the first few observations of this filtered data frame so when we execute the codes in the cell we get what we wanted awesome because we now know that second label in the columns for each ticker is only close price we can drop that as this column label is not required anymore we could do this by applying drop label method on it in the following code we will learn how to drop a label of the column in pandas data frame and let's review the data frame post this action. So when we execute the codes, we can see that the data frame is much clean and ready for further analysis. I will stop this tutorial video here and in the next video in this series, we will be learning on plotting the data as well as applying financial analysis using pandas and matplotlib libraries. If you have liked this video, please hit the like button and would like to receive the immediate notification on future releases of my tutorial videos. Please subscribe to my channel and press bell icon next to it. Also, please write in comment section below to let me know what would you like to learn more about and I will get back to you on that. Thank you for your support and see you in the next video. Happy learning.